Hello, and thanks for joining. My name is Jeff Demuth, and I'm a solutions architect at AWS. And in today's video, we're going to build a geospatial data lake and connect it to ArcGIS using Redshift. So in a video I did earlier, I walked through creating a geospatial data lake with more of a streaming workload, so data streaming in from some sensors and showing that in an ArcGIS dashboard. And then I realized I should probably take a step back and, and show kind of the initial setup of a geospatial data lake. In my ArcGIS Pro here, you can see we've got a connection to a Redshift database. We've got a table called wind turbine that has some wind turbine data. None of this data actually lives in that database. It all lives in S3, which is our object storage. It's just some CSV files. Ideally, you'd want that to be a more cloud-efficient storage medium like Parquet or GeoParquet, but CSV for demo purposes is fine. Um, really, even CSV is fine. If you've got sensor data or an application that only writes CSV, you can write it here and, and it'll work. It'll be fine. Uh, so I created a, a new folder. And this is just going to be new turbine. We've got another data in here. This isn't registered with the database yet. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and create a database. I've already got one traditional Redshift cluster in here. This is a relatively small cluster. I also have a Redshift serverless cluster. Um, but we'll go ahead and create another traditional cluster. We'll give it a name. Just use the default. We'll just make it a small DC2 large instance. So two cores. Set the number of nodes to one. And so this cluster is about $182 a month for a, a, a small Redshift data warehouse. Give it a username, set a password. There's going to be an IEM role. This is how it accesses the data in S3. And security group, default VPC. All right, we'll click Create Cluster. And we can see now that cluster is creating. We'll give that a couple minutes to run. It'll probably come up in maybe four or five minutes. All right, and now my cluster is available. We'll just go in here and copy the endpoint. Got disconnected. Then we'll go to databases, add database. Oh, not add database. New database. Select Redshift. Put in the DNS name. Drop the port number. You may have to open up that 40, uh, 5349. and a security group. Uh, you have the option for a username or an IEM role. So this is on an EC2 instance. 
Uh, ideally, you'd want to use an IEM role here so that you don't have to type in a username and password. And we'll go to database, select our dev database. and connect and there we go so we don't actually have any tables here yet so let's go ahead and add one so from redshift we can go to query data nope oh, that's not what we've got two query editors That's V1. Let's use V2. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an external schema. This is what's going to connect Redshift to our glue catalog. And I'll talk about that in a second, or our data catalog. That's kind of how AWS shares tables between glue and, and Redshift and EMR and some of the other services. It's going to use a default IM role that it attached to our Redshift cluster. Once we run this command, Oh, not connected yet. There we go. So right now I don't have any tables or external schemas. Once I run this command, Redshift will see any external tables I've created in the glue service or the glue catalog. There we go. Now under this dev database, I've got that old schema. It's got no tables in it, but now we've got this new external schema. And we can see we've got one table in there. So this was the old folder in S3. Uh, we've got the new one, so there's two ways I could go about adding that. I could do show table schema, and this will essentially give me the command to run to create a new table. So I could just change this to turbine2 as a table name, and then change the path in S3. But a slightly easier way to do that is to use a glue crawler. Which will just go and crawl that folder and determine the schema for us, automatically create the table, and it will automatically show up in Redshift. It's a really nice feature. So we'll go create crawler. Give it a name. Add our data source. Click Next.
add it to our default glue database, create, and then run. This runs pretty quick. Um, it'll probably take uh, I don't know, a minute and a half. I can see it running now. And there we go. Exactly a minute and a half. Um, and this is a smaller da data set, right? So it's actually super small, probably like 10 rows. I've run these on larger data sets, some, I mean, up to 100 gigs, even larger. And it's still pretty quick. I, I mean, I want to say maybe 10, 20 minutes, but I don't remember offhand. But to scan through that much data, it's, it's still pretty fast. But now we should have a new table in Redshift. If I hit refresh. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Took me a couple tries to figure out why it wasn't adding this table, but the IAM role that I selected didn't have permissions to that folder. So updated the IAM role, reran it. We've got one table change. Now we can see we've got two external tables. And I can query this table. And there we go, there's our results. Now if we go back, we're not going to see that table show up. There's actually one other thing we have to do. Typically, ArcGIS won't show you the table unless there's geometry data in it. And while we do have some geometry data, it's just the lat and the long. Oh, where'd my window go? Here we go. So we can see over here. I actually just put the lat long in the table. Like You'd probably want to do a join against another table that had the lat long. <coughs> But what we're going to do is create a view using this command. So we'll take the lat and long value, combine them to make a point, set the SRID, and this will create a temporary view. And then ArcGIS can pick that view up and start working with it. There we go. If I refresh, there's our table. And again, this is just a CSV file sitting out on S3. And a current map. Oh, that's interesting. So I think the glue crawler gave our timestamp variable something, some data type that uh, ArcGIS doesn't like. Let's see if we can just cast that to var. We could probably do that in our view even.
I'll just try and remove that column. Oh, I see what I did here. There was two column names, ta uh, two column names with the same name. Yeah, databases don't like it when you've got two column names that are identical. up the uh, SRID, we'll pick the attributes we want, finish. We won't see any new points on the map here because they're all at the same point. But uh, I've, I've loaded significant amounts of, of data, like I, we've got a GDELT data set in our open data that I, I ran a crawler against and added to the map and it had 500,000 points on it. I've also got a blog I've published that talks about how to partition geospatial data lakes. So typically you want something like a geohash, so a geohash folder structure so that you can optimize your queries. When you do a query layer, you can say, only give me the data in this geohash. And then Redshift knows not to scan the entire S3 bucket. It's going to go to just that one folder it needs, grab that CSV or per K file out and put those points on the map. Uh, so having a, a good partition format like geohash can take a query from a couple minutes down to milliseconds. All right, and that's all I had for the video today. Uh, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. And thanks for joining.